have this, this database of employees and their departments and everything else, just imagine pressing a button and now you have lists of employees. Exo, you know, 101, 103, 107. 101, 103, 107, 107. Those are two rows there now. And now what is their first name attribute? David Bertrand Bertrand. Uh, David mm -hmm. Bertrand Bertrand. Yep. Who's the last guy? Alan, mm -hmm. etc. So it's obvious yeah. what you would do to, to listify your database. Um, to mabify your database, you would just add a nothing row to every guy and have the, nothing, the attribute of nothing be nothing. Um, given any functor from C to D, an, an adjunction always gives rise to a monad. So this adjunction induces a monad on C and a comonad on, a monad on D. And F, the same F, induces the other two data migration, other data migration functor, pi, induces a monad on D and a comonad on C. And the monad's basically like the closure operator of going in and out. Yep, exactly. Gonna, exactly. Do it again, it's going to give you the same answer. So let's just give some example. So suppose I have a database state, so I've filled all my tables with data. We're almost done here. I'm 34 of 35, I think. Um, maybe 34 of 36. Um, if M is the maybe monad, what does it do to my database state? Well, oh, I already told you what it does. It adds one more row. And if M is list, it takes uh, the F attribute of this list will be this list. The monad, okay, so then that I already said. What about those monads from the migration functors? It's kind of strange, but just as a very simple example, here's the database schema for two sets. And here's the database schema for one set, and there's a functor from here to here. And what does it do? What does a monad do? It'll take a state here, namely if I put the set A here and set B here, it'll send it to A union B, A union B. So then we can imagine what it would be to give a map from one database state to M of another database state. Well, you have this, all these lists of employees or whatever, but you don't want every possible list because that's too infinite. So let's just pick seven of them. That list, that list, that list, that list, that list. That's a functor, that's a natural transformation from a, a database state with just seven things in that row to lists of the other database state. Mm -hmm. Or in maybe, It'll be, I have a database state, and you have a database state, and every row in mine goes to a row in yours, but I'm allowed to send something to nothing if I want to. Mm -hmm. And in this one, it would say, I have sets A and B, you have sets X and Y. I know that A goes to X or Y, I'm not sure which. I know that B goes to X or Y, I'm not sure which. Second to last slide. So an algebra for a monad is a natural transformation from M to the identity. So for list, it kind of folds. It's a functor. It's a it's a map from list A back to A. It's kind of a, an associative folding operation. Or for maybe A to A, it's choosing a default value in A. And monads for algebras for monads on C sets could also be interesting. Um, if the monad on C set is in, induced by one on set, then it's just a table by table version of the above. So in other words. Uh, list of A, uh, these list of employees, it's just like taking the max, the best employee out of every list, or, or the one with the most salary, or whatever. Or the union, or I don't know, what would that be? Concatenation of their name or something. Um, if M is induced by data migration functors, like F taking the C to D, then the M algebras have a different flavor. They're not table by table. It's more like um, this A union B thing is kind of. Anyway, these M algebras for this kind of thing emulate D set inside of C set in some sense. In, other, in fact, if the migration functor, quote unquote, is monadic, this is a word from category theory, then M algebras, so what are M algebras? They're states on C with an operation on them. Um, M algebras, which are states on C with an operation, are equivalent to D sets. So in other words, C has a perspective on the world, D has a perspective on the world, and we've been able to line them up with a functor, F taking C to D. And now, M algebras is, complete, is something that C completely understands. But the category of M algebras will be equivalent to the category of D sets. So in other words, I can understand what D is seeing inside of myself. So anyway, I hope the connection between databases and categories is clear. Whether it's useful or not, not 
not my concern yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when do you move over to the computer science department? <laughs> right. Scary. Um, I yeah. Uh, I think their skill set is completely different than mine. Yeah, I've seen like my, when my friend Carlo made that machine that automatically converted uh, a database query mm -hmm. into these polynomial functors. I was kind of um, I was impressed. But anyway, so so I hope that it's clear at least that you can kind of see things very easily this way. That categories and database schemas are pretty similar things actually, and. Um, Anyway, oh, with a clear formalism for databases, you might even be able to, pr to use proof assistance like Agda um, to prove query optimization or something like that. It's all, you know, instead of, instead of having a special machine that does it, you could just say, uh, I can prove that this query path is the best one because uh, I can put everything I want to into a strict mathematical language instead of kind of a crappy, uh, you know, whatever they do. Now. <laughs> anyway, thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I have one question. Yeah. Uh, since, as you mentioned, uh, the uh, databases, the uh, pre sheets are the category as a whole as a top of, uh, that means it has exponents. It's Cartesian yep. closed. Yep. So, what are some of the constructions of, say, Cartesian closure look like in these? database categories. Like yeah, it's categories pretty it's database. pretty weird actually. <laughs> I wish it wasn't. I was really sad when I found out that it was, but but it's actually kind of bizarre um, thing somehow. So um, yeah, so what he's asking is that somehow oh. <laughs> there's a whiteboard over there if you actually True. want to use that. Right. So for example the um, <clears throat> multigraphs Multigraphs, ordinary multigraphs, is a database state on. Oh, but I don't know if this marker there is. We have one marker. Is a database state. Sorry. So suppose you have uh, this category. I'll uh, unplug. Oh, that was smart. Yeah. That's a very tiny category. I'll call this E and this B. Then a a functor from this category. This is not me. To sets is a set of edges, a set of vertices, and a uh, source map and a target map. So a database state on this is a graph. Um, and a, the category of C sets, if this is C, it is the category of graphs in the ordinary way. Um, so you might ask, well, what is the exponential law for this very simple thing? So you hope that given two graphs, the exponential between those two graphs is going to be a graph. It's going to have some edges and some vertices. But it's actually a horrendous thing. <laughs> It makes no sense. You yeah. wish it made sense and it doesn't. So if it doesn't work for this, it seems to not work. It also probably won't work in the topos, in the, um, in the database setting. So it supports all that stuff. Maybe someday there'll be use for it. But, uh, <laughs> and products and sums are what you hope they'll be. Um, but but, uh, but the, the internal language, language is not the language we want. What do you say? The internal language is not the language we assume it be. seems, right. Well, for unions and, and, and uh, intersections, like that, it's good for products and some. It's good, but the exponentiation and sub objects, well, um, sub objects, pullbacks, obviously. Yep. Yeah. So the sub object classifier, but exponentiation and sub object classifier are bad. Yeah. Well, sub object classifier is actually fine. For I mean, I, some, some whatever, is whatever it is, I mean, subness is it, sub objects are well understood. Right. Right. So, hmm? right. so even if it's it's really idiots, exponentiation. Who cares? I don't understand. I have it. Yeah. And so. Yeah, well, it seems odd that that wouldn't fit. It wouldn't, of course, like exponentiating these categories. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't correspond to anything that we currently do, but that's probably right. because we don't know. But that. I tried to. We don't know that we can do it. <laughs> I took two. I took the two to the arrow. Okay. So arrow is a gaze basically on on this. It's a graph with two objects and one. It's the unita of E. Mm -hmm. And I took uh, two to it, the sub object classifier, exponentiating this thing. And it was such a ridiculous thing that I, I never thought of it again. I, thought, okay. <laughs> I recommend you try it. I mean, this is what you'd hope. You'd say, I, I hope that whatever exponentiation is, it makes sense in this very basic case. But maybe for my limited viewpoint, I didn't see it out. Any other questions? Can I call you back?
All right. Well, thank you very much.